Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. The Liberal Party of Canada and the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau are releasing their election platform bit by bit over the last couple uh, last couple days and last week. And this week, they finally released their plans for Canada's real estate market. Uh, this was hot, this is widely anticipated as both the NDP and the Conservative Party have released their plans. Um, so this week, when the Liberal Party came out with theirs. Uh, there was a lot to there was a lot to go, to comb through. Um, we already did a video on the top five election promises for Canada's real estate market, but in this video, I want to go through something new that came out in the Liberal Party platform, which is the Home Buyers Bill of Rights. We haven't had anything like this yet in Canada, um, so I want to go through all the proposals that's included in it. There are seven proposals, um, and they all have something to do with helping out homeowners helping out home buyers and uh, cooling down Canada's real estate market. So what I want to do is go through the seven proposals offered in the Home Buyers Bill of Rights and we'll go over some um, analysis and critique of each one of them uh, to see kind of where they're going to put our real estate market going forward. The first proposal offered in the Home Buyers Bill of Rights is an end to the blind bidding system. The blind bidding system is where you put an offer in on a house and you're not aware of all the other offers that are being put in on a house. So there could be 10 other offers, there could be no other offers, there could be 5 other offers. Off offers. You get, the, you get the picture. This can often lead to way over bidding, which I think we've seen quite a bit here in my hometown of London, Ontario, where we've seen a lot of offers go $100,000, $100, dollars over asking price. This can happen because if you're not aware of all the other offers around you, you're going to put in a much higher bid, especially if you really like the house in question. So whereas you might have been able to get the house for $5,000 more, you may overbid $50,000 more. Not only does this overinflate our housing market, but it also puts our banks in much more of a, a risk of being underwater or of lending too much for a property that that property is not really, when that property really isn't worth it. It also puts pressure on our mortgage insurers. By ending the blind bidding system, the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights does attempt to kind of cool down the housing market and put a bit of the power back into the hands of the home buyers rather than the home sellers, which have obviously held that power for the last year and a half, two years at minimum, depending on the, which area of Canada and which real estate market, which real estate market you're in. Second, the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights seeks to guarantee by law your right to a home inspection. A lot of people these days aren't putting in a condition of a home inspection on their offer to purchase because the market is so heavily tilted towards the favor of the sellers. Most sellers these days are rejecting conditional offers in favors of offers that don't have any conditions, no financing, no home inspection, no appraisal. They're doing this because they're they're sure that their their house is definitely going to get sold. So it's like what's hand, in the hand versus what's in the bush. As a result of this, a lot of home inspections aren't being completed when they really should. This is, this can cause problems for the home buyers and for the banks. The banks don't want to finance a property that has a ton of mold in it, or has a cracked foundation, or that needs a brand new roof. The banks don't want to finance that. But since there aren't any home inspections they're either just not financing it and uh, unbeknownst to the home buyers who think they're approved for a mortgage then they go to apply and the bank looks at the the mls and sees that there are problems with the house um, or the banks are financing it and they've put sunk all their money and as well as the home buyer into a house that's not worth what it was paid what was paid for it so with this home buyer bill of rights that home inspection will be guaranteed by law what it doesn't spell out yet, and what we do want to see in the future as more information comes out, is whether or not the home inspection is going to be reason enough to back out of your offer to purchase, and what kind of protections they're going to put in for home sellers that buyers aren't, say, having other problems fall down and they're just blaming the, uh, the, the home inspection when they do decide to pull out of the offer. So good that we're going to start to see more and more home inspections, as that's great for the real estate market overall. But we definitely want to hear some more information on this, as the, uh, there will be some, some definite complexities going forward. Third, and I think they're going to have a real problem with the implementation of this one, but the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights wants to guarantee that the banks give a six-month mortgage deferral option 
if you lose your job or another major lifetime event happens. I do want to do a whole nother video on this. Please subscribe to make sure you get the updates. But I think this is going to be a big, big problem with the banks and the mortgage lenders. When COVID happened and all the banks, for the most part, gave the six month deferral process, that was excellent. And it definitely helped a lot of people out. And uh, that I thought at the time that looks great. The banks are obviously everybody's working together. However, since then, we've seen the banks get much more stringent on types of employment when you apply for a mortgage because they're worried that uh, they could have to give more deferrals if something, if more lockdowns happen, if something happens with COVID, et cetera, et cetera. There's a real worry on the banks, on, on, on the part of the banks and the mortgage lenders as to what type of industry you're in. Um, and if they're going to have to give another deferral due to COVID. So I think if this Home Buyer's Bill of Rights was implemented, then the banks and the mortgage lenders are going to have a real problem with having to guarantee that they will offer you six months mortgage, mortgage deferrals, right or wrong, because they don't want to do it. So I'm not exactly sure how the government's going to implement this, but like I said, I do, there's there's much more involved in this, but and I am going to do a whole new uh, another video on it. But for right now, suffice to say, uh, the government wants to ensure in the Bill of Rights that should you lose your job or have a major unexpected life event, that you can get a six month deferral pro uh, deferral on your mortgage payments from the banks. Right now, but again, we'll have another video on this. But for right now, suffice to say. Uh, the government wants to ensure in the Bill of Rights that should you lose your job or have a major unexpected life event, that you can get a six month deferral, uh, deferral on your mortgage payments from the banks. Fourth, the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights seeks to guarantee that you get a full history of the selling price of the, of the property that you're buying. So if you're buying a house for say 500,000 and last year it sold for 200,000, the Bill of Rights seeks to guarantee that you're going to know about each time that the house was sold in its history. Because if you bought the, if the house was sold uh, one year ago for $200,000, you're going to want to know why was there that $300,000 price increase? Was it upgrades? Was it sold way below market value the, the year before? Is it being sold for way above market value right now? All of those things uh, are be great for the home buyers to know, and the Home Buyers Bill of Rights does seek to make sure that you do know that. Fifth, uh, the, the process of double ending real estate deals on the part of real estate agents. The Home Buyers Bill of Rights wants to make sure that everybody knows each party in this transaction. So double ending is when a real estate agent acts for both the home buyer and the home seller. Most real estate agents that I know won't do it because they understand that the home seller and the home buyer have two very, very different interests with the home seller wanting to get the most price and the, the highest price and the home buyer wants to get wants to buy the house for the lowest price. How can one real estate agent represent both interests at the same time? It's very, very difficult to do, even though they, they do swear to be ethical, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what this does is it wants to make sure it's disclosed to both the buyers and the sellers who all the parties are in this real estate transaction, especially when the a real estate agent is double ending the real estate deal. Again, this is, this is great news for both buyers and both sellers, as more information is almost always better than less, especially when it comes to the biggest purchase of your life. Sixth, and this one surprises me that it even has to be said, but this one requires that mortgage lenders um, make sure that they disclose to borrowers all the products that are available. Now on my end, my brokerage and myself, I make sure I always disclose what uh, variable rates are, fixed rates, uh, what rates are available, the pros and cons of variable and fixed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously that's not the case with all mortgage lenders, but this, um, this home buyer's bill of rights would ensure by law that the mortgage lenders and the banks had to do that. So, I mean, any reputable mortgage broker or mortgage lender will do this already, but I guess they're just adding this into, they're codifying it into law um, to ensure that it is the same all across the board so you know all the options that are available to you. Finally, the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights seeks to move forward with a publicly accessible beneficial ownership registry. 
This is something that's been worked on uh, for quite a while, but it's coming to the forefront now that it's campaign season. The beneficial ownership registry would be a public, publicly accessible registry that would list who the beneficial owners are of all of their corporations that are buying up all of these houses. This is really anti-money laundering legislation, but it's good for the housing market overall. So when you see these corporations buying up hundreds and hundreds of houses, as there's a lot of headlines were made about this a few months ago, this registry will ensure that you know who the owners of these corporations are. Are these just dummy corporations acting for someone much, much larger? Or are these individuals who are flipping houses in a corporate name? What this will do is give you access to all of that information, um, which should help with money laundering and interests that are maybe not engaging in a reputable manner. Um, so by having this public registry where you'll know who the shareholders are of these corporations and who's benefiting from all this house flipping should help you in your purchases going forward and actually could help cool down the housing market as well. So these seven proposals make up the Home Buyer's Bill of Rights and um, a lot of them seem really, really like they could definitely help, um, such as making sure that the banks and mortgage lenders explain to you all of the products and rates that are available and then I think there'll definitely be some issues with some of them in maybe not in theory but definitely in implementation such as uh, forcing the banks to offer the six-month mortgage deferral. I think the banks will offer it once you have a mortgage but I definitely think there's going to be a problem um, when it comes to mortgage qualification for a lot of different types of jobs um, where there'll be special standards. But again, we're gonna do a whole new video on that. So more and more of these are gonna to have to be fleshed out as this campaign un un continues to, to unfold over the next couple weeks. And hopefully we'll see a, re a response from the Conservative and the NDP. Um, they've already rolled out their housing plans, but it'll be interesting to see what the opposition has to say about this Home Buyers Bill of Rights. As, like I've said, we've never had it they use the, this in Canada before. Um, if you like this video, please do click like and subscribe and you'll get more updates as this campaign continues to unfold and as we learn more about this Homebuyer's Bill of Rights. Until then, thanks for watching.